Hello everyone and welcome to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're gonna to be doing a video on fine pitch BGA fan outs. And this video is actually a follow-up to an earlier video on setting up blind and buried vias in your PCB layout. Now in that earlier video, we were looking at a viewer question and we did some of the front end work that we need to do to set up those via types and layer pairs. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do the fan out with an actual component and we're gonna do this in Altium Designer. So make sure to hop into your copy of Altium Designer and follow along. Let's get started. First, let's take a look at that viewer question from our previous video. You may remember this question from Senthil Kumar. Senthil Kumar writes, Hi Zach, please make a video about how to do fan outs for a fine pitch BGA, pitch 0.4 millimeters or 0.3 millimeters. Now you also see there's a second question here about the difference between micro vias and blind and varied vias and how we use them in a PCB layout. So in our previous video, we did look at how to set up all of those different via styles and enable micro vias in PCB layouts using the layer stack manager in Altium Designer. In this video, we're going to apply all of those via styles to an actual component. We're going to use the Ethnix Tryon T20 FPGA. The Ethnix T20 FPGA comes in a 0.4 millimeter pitch BGA in wafer level chip scale packaging, and you can create the symbol and the footprint for this component using the automated tools in Altium Designer. Inside your schematic library, you can use the symbol wizard to create a basic symbol, and after that symbol is created, you can go over it and name all of the pins appropriately using the packaging information available from Ethnix. Once you have that created, you can then create a footprint using the IPC compliant footprint generator wizard. Create that footprint, add it into your PCB library, and then link it to the schematic symbol using the schematic library tool. Once you've got that created, you can then place your schematic symbol into a new schematic. And after that's placed, you can then import it into your PCB layout. We're going to work with a pretty basic design. We're not going to use any external components. We're just going to use the basic FPGA footprint. We're going to assign one net to everything just so that we can show how the fan out feature works and then how to route in and out of that BGA using the routing tools in Altium Designer. So let's take a look how to do this in the PCB editor. Now, when we have a fine pitch component like this Tryon T20 FPGA, where we have a 0.4 millimeter pitch between the balls on the package and, of course, the pads in this footprint, we may not have enough room to fit a via in between these pads. And therefore, a dog bone fan out is going to be uh, very difficult or impossible to manufacture. So because of that, we generally do via in pad for the fan out. So in this case, we would place the via directly in the pads on these inner rows. And those vias are generally going to be blind and buried vias. So make sure to refer to the earlier video that I mentioned in order to watch that process for setting up those blind and buried vias. After you set up your blind and buried vias, you can start uh, placing them manually or you can use the automated fan out tool to get those vias placed into the footprint in your PCB layout. So I think the best way to show these fan out strategies is to start with some examples. I have three identical components here. These are all the Tryon T20 FPGA component. I have three arrangements here with different fan outs. The third one isn't gonna be used for a fan out strategy, so I really just wanna focus on the first two. So here in U1, what I've done is I have all of the outer pads exposed and they have no vias. All of the vias are on the inner rows. And so if I just switch on single layer mode, you can then scroll through the layers and look at the different via transitions. So here on the outermost set of vias, we have blind vias terminating on layer two. And then we have another set of vias terminating on layer three. And then we have another set of vias terminating on layer four. Now with this arrangement, this internal via right here that you see on layer four is actually a conventional buried via. So we can see what's going on here if we look at the stack up. The stack up that we're using has micro vias on the outer two layers and then a conventional buried via on the inner layer. So this is a two plus N plus two stack up. The size of this via is a little bit exaggerated just so that when we're in multi-layer mode, you can see it around all of the blind vias. So I'll come back to that in just a moment. Another way to do this is to have all of these outer rows exposed 
with no vias on them. And then if I go back into single layer mode and I start on L2, you can see where my first via transition terminates. And then I have another via transition and then it terminates here on layer three. And then we have nothing on layer four. When should we use these different types of via transitions? Well, to better understand that, let's take a look at the stack up. Let's see what we can do with routing. And I think that will help illuminate a bit more when we can use these two different strategies with our vias. So if we look at our stack up, again, we'll see here that we have very thin outer layers. I've set three mils here. You could go thinner with certain laminate materials. You would just want to, of course, qualify your stack up with your fabrication house. And then I've got my standard thick layer here in the middle of the stack up that holds the conventional buried via. And then, of course, there could be more layers spanned by this conventional via. I've just omitted them just for, for brevity in this example. Now, if we look at what we could do with routing, we could have signals on the top layer. And depending on the thickness of this layer and the copper foil that we have available, Available for fabrication, we could have ground here, or we could do a coplanar arrangement, or we could have ground down here, and we could have two signal layers here. Although you have to be careful with that because you could have broadside crosstalk. But what I'm going to show here is just using routing with signal on these layers. Again, just to show as an example what you can do in these different layer arrangements. Now, if we go back into the PCB, we then have to consider how wide do our traces need to be? That's gonna determine whether or not we can use this arrangement or this arrangement. Because if we can make our traces very thin in this region underneath the BGA, then what we can do is we can use this arrangement. If I can place a trace from this pad and then route between these other two pads, I can get this trace out of the BGA. But look at how thin this trace needs to be. It actually needs to be pretty thin. And the exact thickness or the width of this trace really depends on the fabricator's capabilities. The thinner my fab fabrication house can make this trace and the tighter these tolerances are between this pad and then the trace, so this distance here, that's going to determine whether or not I can get this trace in between these pads and fabricate this successfully. So if this style of routing is approved for your width of your trace, then you'll be able to use this style of fan out. And you'll notice here the width that I've set is two mils. So it really depends on your fabrication house capabilities. So more advanced fabrication houses are going to allow this kind of routing from these inner balls outside of the BGA package. And then of course, with the outer row, you could just route this straight out as normal. You would have a fan out that looks kind of like this. Now, after routing out these traces like this, we can go over to the inner layers. And then normally we would just start routing this guy out like this. I've also set it to a two mil trace width. What about this set of vias on the next row in? Well, remember this set of vias also transitions down to layer three and then terminates. We could just start routing from here directly through these other two vias on the same layer. So you may not have to go down another layer just to continue this fan out. You could actually do this two trace routing style in between these two vias as I've shown here. Now you have to make sure, of course, again, just like on the top layer, on your inner layer, you're going to have enough room to fit a trace between these vias. So you have to make sure that you know your clearances and that you specify those in your design rules. And you need to do those design rules on different layers because the tolerances and the clearance limits can be different on the outer layers versus these inner layers. But you could do this. If you're not allowed to do this type of routing like this on this inner layer through these balls, you could then of course keep this via transition down to layer three, and then you would just route out like this on layer three in the same way we did on layer two. So what about this example? Well, we would use this kind of strategy if we were required to use wider traces to get out from the BGA. So let's just suppose instead of a two mil wide trace, we're required to use a four mil wide trace as our minimum. Now, in that case, it's gonna be much more difficult to get a signal between these two pads and obey those clearance requirements between those pads. You would need to be below five or four mils, again, depending on the fabrication capability, in order to do this and then be assured that you're not gonna have any defects. So in this case, what you would do is on layer two, if I just put this in single layer mode for a moment, I would then route my second trace right below that first trace. 
you would then continue this on layer three, for example, and layer three would route straight out like this. And then again, layer two would just route straight out like this. And then layer one would start up here and then we would route straight out like this. That should be pretty simple to see here. The only reason we have to do this is because I'm required to use traces that are so thick, I just can't fit them in between these balls. So now that we're looking at this, I think it deserves asking under what particular circumstances might you need to use these wider traces coming into one of these outer balls compared to the case of routing like this with a wider trace. So your fabrication house might allow you to do this type of routing, but you might require this width of routing. In that type of case, you might be needing to route with controlled impedance. So for example, you might need to use this wider trace in order to hit a 50 ohm impedance. So just as an example, if we go into the stack up, let's suppose that this were a two mil outer layer instead of a three mil outer layer. With this DK4 value laminate, if we then look at this trace width, um, you should know that this trace width would correspond to approximately a 50 ohm impedance. So there's that two to one factor for 50 ohm impedance on DK4 laminates. That's one reason that you might need to route like this, even though your fabricator might enable you to route like this. Now, if you still want to do this type of routing and come into a 50 ohm interconnect, you can do that. You would just need to use a neck down approach. So basically what that means is once you get to, let's say approximately this point in your route, you could then continue routing from here but just with this wider trace. And then you would start right here and widen out as you continue your route outside of the BGA. Now, if you do this, you should know that right here at this interface, you now have a higher impedance discontinuity. You have to simulate this and you need to make sure that you are using this without creating excess return loss. So if you apply a trace taper here between these two different trace widths, that's gonna help smooth out that impedance discontinuity between this lower impedance section of the trace and then this higher impedance section of the trace. How do we get all of these different vias into these pads? Well, if you're familiar with some of the fan out tools in Ultium Designer, you should know that if you go to the route fan out and then component or room setting, you can then tell Ultium Designer to automatically place vias on these components. In order to have the automated tool place those vias in pads like you see here, then you'll need to go to design and rules. And then if you scroll down here to the high speed section, you will see that there is a vias under SMD rule. You need to enable that. And that will ensure that vias are allowed to be placed under these SMD pads. The other thing that you need to do is you need to go over to fan out control and under fan out control, under fan out style, you need to select under pads. And then you can see here that this is BGA query is automatically placed here. Now you could have different fan out styles for different BGAs. And so if that were the case, you could of course duplicate this and then you could make this one say is BGA and within room. And then we're gonna have our room that we have set up for our BGA. So if you wanna learn how to do this, check out the links in the description. There are two feature videos that show how to set up the tool so that you can get uh, all of these different vias under these SMD pads, as I've shown here in these different styles. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. Make sure to check out the links we have in the description. We have some links to some feature videos that show you how to configure BGA fan out so that you can use via in pad like we've shown in this video. Also, there's a link to a blog that shows you how to size your footprint for via in pad. Make sure to follow those guidelines because they show how to match the pad size to the ball size on the bottom of your package. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Make sure to leave your comments and questions in the comments section. And of course, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.